Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we're looking at the ASUS RT AXE 7800 tri-band router with Wi-Fi 6E. This is an excellent looking router. It's definitely capable on paper, but does it stack up in real life? Well, if you want to find out, then watch on. And while you do, make sure to tap the like button and subscribe to support us to have more videos like this. Big thanks to ASUS for sending this router for review. Let's get started by rolling the intro. The AXE7800 looks amazing. I really like it. Even though it's a bit bulky, I still have strong feelings towards it. It has a new 6 GHz band with 7 times more channels, ASUS safe browsing, enhanced network security with AI Protection Pro and instant guard shareable VPN, free parental controls included, 2.5 GHz ports and link aggregation, but that's only at 1 gig. You see, the 6 GHz range has its own and since 6 gig devices not everywhere, still empty lane, meaning you should be able to hit max speeds with each packet being treated as priority. Now, Wi-Fi 6E is an extension of the 6, but brings faster speeds, lower latency, and more network security. It offers higher capacity with additional spectrum and actually no overlapping channels, which is great when you have lots of devices around the house. It has less interference and drives a higher throughput on paper. So let's talk speeds. In the admin panel, you can split the Wi-Fi signal to their operating frequency, so 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 6 GHz. Or you can have one SSID. For my testing purposes, I needed to control exactly which frequency my devices connect to. But first, let's do a baseline test. Using a 2.5 gig capable port on my computer connected via CAT6 to the 1 gig port on this router out to a laptop via CAT6 who also has a 2.5 gig adapter connecting together we have a max speed of 1 gig on the LAN port. So we max out the 1 gig port as you can see in these results. Now what would be really nice from ASUS if all the LAN ports were 2.5 gig this would be really helpful for transferring files but in all honesty it makes sense if the internet is faster than 1 gig you can then spread that speed around all the other LAN ports. So having the WAN port is 2.5 gig is okay. Now let's look at Wi-Fi speeds. In this example we're connecting to the 2.4 GHz frequency using a Wi-Fi 6 enabled device. Do note no E on the end. From here we see slow speeds on this frequency. The speed is pretty dismal but not unlike other 2.4 GHz devices and so it would be used for things like IP cameras or smaller devices that don't need a lot of download speed. This is still a useful frequency so don't get me wrong we're not going to get rid of it because it penetrates the home, the brick walls very very well. In this example I took some readings of each corner of the home and was able to get a bit of a scale based on the color ranges of the Wi-Fi analyzer app. So here you can see it reaches all the corners of the home and if you can set it to a single SSID then it would swap to the best frequency as you roam the home. This is another benefit of this router right here. Moving on to 5G, the speed jumps significantly and I feel finally the router is showing what it can do. We get a very close to cable speed and the upload speed is, is fine. Now here is the fun part, you can have dozens of devices on the router on the 5G frequency and still manage very close to these speeds which is is awesome. Now the range of 5G has some slow spots. The yellow denotes areas where you are not nearing that result. However, do note there are no red areas because I do have another chart with some red. If there were, they would be outside the home to the top of this image that you see here. Now, Wi-Fi 6. If you have a device that is Wi-Fi 6 capable, you'll be able to pick up the frequency of Wi-Fi 6 in this. Picking it up, the speed drops a little bit and I spent a bit of time trying to figure out why the speed was slower than 5G and I did get to the bottom of it. And honestly, I blame the Wi-Fi organization. Just like the USB standards organization, they have created some messy naming conventions with the E. You see, Wi-Fi 6E is backwards compatible, but to get the most out of Wi-Fi 6E, your Wi-Fi device has to be Wi-Fi 6E capable, not just Wi-Fi 6. So while technically it was using Wi-Fi 6, it wasn't with the E. And so my device wasn't making the most of this router's special capabilities. So I think it's finally time to upgrade my testing gear. Now, in my head, I kept thinking, 
Cat5 cables, Cat5e, they all work with devices, it's a faster speed cable, it should be backwards compatible, but logic doesn't stand up in court in this scenario. So expect to see more devices that require the E at the end, but Wi-Fi 7 is also here. On the range, we have our first concern. 6G just cannot reach as far. We have seen some red areas in the back of the home with very low to actually no speeds at all. The frequency used here is just not great at long distances. While jitter remained low and the ping was fine, speeds were all over the place out of the green zone. My recommendation for placement of this router is to be as centralized as possible in your home away from walls. Or you can buy two of these for $600 each to create a mesh network, which works really, really well. And this is a really cool thing about ASUS devices. They're all in their own little ecosystem that can connect to each other. And even though mesh devices are generally a lot smaller and these guys are a little bit bulky and these antennas are not adjustable, I think it could work out well if you use them as mesh devices. They do have the ability to be mounted on a wall like this, but then you've got some cables hanging. In any case, it's up to you. Let's jump into the app and the web interface. And here we have the ASUS RT-AXE 7800 web interface, and it's as standard as it gets from an ASUS point of view. We have all our standard menus on the left from AI mesh, guest network, AI protection, parental controls, QoS, traffic analyzer, USB, AI cloud and of course all the standards over here. Amazon Alexa might be new to some people who have not used an ASUS router in a little while. Uh, you can connect it up and ask for things like turning on a guest network or upgrading the firmware or pausing the internet. That might be useful when you've got kids and you say, that's it, everybody off. You say, hey, Mr. A or Mrs. A, turn off the router or pause the internet. On the wireless side, this is the part that I was describing before. I have three separate frequencies or bands 2.4 gigahertz here, the 5 gig and the 6 gig. Now there are some interesting settings here because the 6 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz uses 160 megahertz channel bandwidths. You can of course change these, but uh, you know, keeping it by default is best because it means you've got a wider potential to connect to more devices. It just means compatibility. And Finally, you can combine them all into one by enabling Smart Connect and they can all just pop into one and you don't have to choose which one. You can also turn off each band. You don't have to keep it on, which is, yeah, it's good, I guess. On the VPN side, ASUS has provided a much more friendlier interface to turn on certain VPNs. Then we have VPN Fusion, which allows you to connect multiple VPN servers simultaneously and assign your client devices using different VPN tunnels as needed, which means that if you've got a TV that plays Netflix, you chuck that through, let's say VPN Express, or if you have a computer that just generally connects to maybe some websites or local websites, and you don't really wanna pay for expensive VPNs, you just wanna use some generic one just to hide your IP, then that's what you can use and separate your devices. It's really, really useful, and it all depends on your setup, but just gives you more flexibility. My favorite feature of all ASUS devices is AI Mesh. Connecting all these devices into one very smart mesh system around your home is a great way to utilize different models that you might have kicking around the house. If you've managed to pick up, let's say an ASUS AXE 7800 on sale and you already have an ASUS system, you can bring them together and create a mesh network inside your home. This is a really great and cost-effective way to get fast, reliable Wi-Fi around the home. In operation mode, you can set the router to be either a wireless router, just like we have here, an access point, which acts as just a repeater of data, so you can connect more devices to the Wi-Fi and to the Ethernet ports at the back, a repeater, a media bridge, and of course, an AI mesh node. Okay, while the web interface feels a little bit dated, the app for the ASUS routers is actually really nice. As you can see here, we have quite a nice looking interface. We can scroll through, see our CPU and RAM, because these days, the actual routers are pretty darn powerful. We can flick through and see some other options, how we're connected and adding nodes and optimizing things. And we can turn on game mode, which prioritizes computers and packets specifically for video games. Works really well. Now we've got our devices that are connected. I've kind of disconnected everything for testing purposes. We've got some insights for things like Wi-Fi sharing and mesh and security insights. If you have some family in the house that isn't very well versed in 
the world of internet, I would suggest turning on Security Insights. It works with Trainer Micro and it does reduce the risk of people clicking on dodgy links. It's not guaranteed, but it's better than nothing. We've got some family controls straight from here. And as I've mentioned before, in other ASUS devices, the cool thing is about profiles, really quick and easy to set up. If you're obviously, I don't know if you're letting preschoolers access the internet, but you can select different ages that allowed for different keywords and access on the internet. It's a really good way to control. And because it's on an app, it's really quick and easy to access. If you need to change something that you might be seeing somebody doing over their shoulder. In the settings, we also have access to Google Assistant. However, that only seems to be accessible from the app and not the web interface. I couldn't find Google Assistant on there, Alexa's there. We can upgrade our firmware and do all that. Not that you do it often enough. And ASUS seems to be rolling out updates maybe once every couple of years. Obviously when it's a new product, they'll be a bit more recent, but after that, you really don't need it because if it works, it works unless there is a new major feature. Other than that, everything else is accessible on the web interface. And honestly, I just like the way this looks. So final thoughts for around 600 or Australian dollars, the router has solid performance, six gigahertz capabilities that are, though not able to beat physics nor brick walls, but the multi-gig WAN is a good touch as we get faster and faster internet by many Australian homes. The extra features such as parental control make sense to me now as a dad, but maybe not others. The network security tools are a nice touch, but I don't know how I can pen test them, so we now have to trust ASUS on that one. But they do add a bit of good feelings to the system. Finally, if you already have other ASUS devices, you can add this into your home as a mesh device. The ecosystem ASUS has made here is hard to pass by. So instead of a dedicated mesh device, you can just buy another router and make that work, which is actually, I think, an overall benefit of having ASUS devices in your home. However, the non-adjustable antennas could cause some issues in placement, especially if you're trying to hide it behind a TV or maybe in a cupboard, and especially if it's used as a mesh device, because you might have a few of these around the home. The file transfer performance could be better. I would like to see 2.5 gig ports on all the LANs, but again, it's not a deal breaker. And lastly, the only con I can see is that six gigahertz performance is not a game changer for many people in the home, unless you're gonna put a couple of these around it. But I would still recommend ASUS mesh devices if you're trying to get six gigahertz across your home in a mesh configuration. The ASUS Zen Wi-Fi Pro ET12 actually has some really great performance in that space. However, it does cost twice the amount of two of these at 1700 AUD. But coming back to this, it's not all bad. Five gig of performance is amazing. And I would highly recommend this for a medium to size home, as long as this is placed in the center of it. Big thanks to Seuss for sending this for review. Check out the links below where you can buy yours. Then tap on the like button if you like this video and smash the subscribe button to support us. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in another video. Bye.